Hello? Hello? Hello, and welcome to my office. I've got the ring light on right now because the lighting in here is just atrocious. I was extracting some files from my SD card so I can get a uh, move on on editing this video, and I realized, have I no manners? I didn't even introduce this video. All you're seeing is me making coffee and breakfast. Well, you are in for a treat. Do you guys remember in my last video that I posted what it feels like a decade ago, I mentioned that eventually I would be filming my everyday makeup look that I've been wearing every single day for the last forever. Today is the day that I'm giving you that video. It's what I have on my face right now. It's pretty basic, but it makes me feel less ugly in the morning, so works for me. If for whatever reason my social life decides to come out of a coma every once in a while and I decide to have a night out on the town, I will do this look, except I'll throw in a little bit of eyeshadow, maybe some bottom lash mascara. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this video. I filmed it on my vlog camera. Reason being is because there was no way in hell I was gonna try to fuck with my Canon for the first time today in however long and try to mess with all the lighting and try to 
set everything up and get super hot because of all the lights. I've kind of been feeling these low-key videos. It reminds me of when I first started YouTube and I used to watch different videos of people like on their bedroom floor, in front of their bed, in their echoey office with weird lighting and shit in the background and their air conditioner blowing in the next room. You know, relatable type stuff. At least I hope that's what this comes across as. Um, I'm rambling and I'm awkward because it's been a while since I've been in front of the camera. So I think I'm gonna go now, but this video will likely go up in the morning. So I hope you guys enjoy my little coffee and breakfast montage. Maybe you guys can make your own coffee and breakfast and get ready with me. You know, maybe I can do this again sometime. Maybe you guys can let me know in the comments what I should call this if we do it again sometime. Maybe the next time we'll do it over a glass of wine. All right. I'm gonna shut the fuck up now. Enjoy the video. Thank you guys very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for not abandoning me. And let's do it. All right, so each morning when I'm getting ready for work, I sit right here. Normally, I'm scrambling because I slept through my alarm. Some days I can successfully do my entire face at home. Other days, I just do 50% here and then 50% at work because I have my own office. So I get a little bit of privacy in the morning so I can fix my face. Some days I'm just so tired that I don't even fill in my eyebrows like for the whole day, which is unheard of, but people don't really notice at work whether I'm done up or not, unless I have no makeup on, and then they ask me if I'm feeling sick. So if I do moisturize in the morning, I like to use my Bioderma Sebium Matte Moisturizing Mattifying Fluid. This is great for combination oily skin. It's actually quite hydrating considering the fact that uh, it's meant for oily skin and it's meant to mattify you. I do switch up my morning moisturizers every once in a while, uh, depending on what's at arm's reach, because I'm usually pretty out of it in the morning, but this is very nice and it's mattifying. My face tends to get pretty red when I put moisturizer on, no matter what, so uh, don't be alarmed. It's just what happens. Moisturizer is done. Now I would scramble to throw on some foundation. I don't always have the most even coverage when I go to work, but today I'm not going to work, so I'm gonna do a good job. You can't really tell in this lighting, but I am self-tanned and I do self-tan my face as well. It's not really picking up on camera. When I am really self-tanned, I use the Estee Lauder Double Wear in sand or rattan but lately i've really been loving the smashbox studio skin 15 hour wear hydrating foundation this is in the shade 1.1 and it's oil free i showed you guys this uh in my last sephora haul in one of my vlogs and as you can tell i'm loving it I think I'm gonna end up picking up another bottle of this in a deeper shade so I can use it when I'm tanned. It has really great coverage, um, it lasts all day, and it's hydrating, so the name is definitely not deceiving, unlike many products. And to apply this, I like to use the Real Techniques Expert Face Brush. I like that it's dense. For my day-to-day -day makeup routine, I can't be bothered to use any primer. It's just one more thing that I don't want to do in the morning. If I'm gonna do like a full glam and go out, then I will use um, the Tarte Clean Slate Pour something. It's the one that fills your pores. When I apply this foundation, I just like to do dabbing motions. And every once in a while, I'll uh, go in with a damp beauty blender and just further blend out areas that look a little bit too heavy. This foundation is a little bit lighter than my neck right now, but it's all good because I'm going to warm up the skin shortly, match everything up. For concealer today, uh, can you guess what I'm gonna use? I think you can probably guess because everybody and their mom is using it. I'm gonna be using the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer in the shade Fair Neutral, and I'm actually going to scrape a little bit off the brush with the back of my sanitized tweezers. I don't like to make contact with my skin using the applicator because I do use this in my professional kit as well, and I don't wanna contaminate it, if you know what I'm saying. I got a little bone to pick with Tarte, okay? Hear me out. So this concealer has been hyped like no other. Okay, it is the holy grail of concealers. We've all heard about it, everybody uses it. Tarte has made this concealer entirely too exclusive. It totally screws over Canadians. It's very hard to find when you go in the States because it's always sold out. I had to hit up like five different Ultas until I finally found the ones that I wanted in stock. 
Stop trying to be so exclusive, Tart. You're not Hogwarts, okay? Seriously, when I finally got my paws on it, I was hoping that I would hate it and that it wouldn't be worth the hype, but it totally is. So naturally, I'm a little bit salty that it's so exclusive and it's so hard for us to get our hands on it in Canada. To set that under eye area, I'm gonna be using my Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder. I use this every single morning. I use the same damp beauty blender that I use to blend out my under eye concealer. I also like to hit up right between my brows and around my smile lines and then I also take my RCMA no color powder and I lightly set the rest of my face and I don't play around when I apply my powder okay I'm very generous reason being I work a nine-to-five job I'm out of the house for 12 hours a day I need my foundation to last and especially because my pores stay playing me and pretty much have their own area code and to apply the RCMA powder I use my flat top elf powder powder brush. The drink that I'm having right now is delicious and refreshing and I'm gonna share it with you because I love you. This is what I have when I'm craving pop, which is very rare. But with the hot weather hitting us, I've just been craving Slurpees and five cent candies. And because I'm currently trying to get my body right, I can't be doing that. So what I do is I take Perrier lemon sparkling soda and I pour it over ice. And I take these stevia drops in either strawberry kiwi or peach flavor. And I put a couple squirts in my tumbler, mix it around, and it tastes just like soda, minus the guilt and all the sugar. If you guys follow me on Snapchat, you already know this because I shared it with you. I know a lot of people have like soda addictions and a can of soda is like 60 grams of sugar, so. Okay, moving on, I'm going to warm up my face using the Laura Mercier Candle Glow Sheer Perfecting Powder. I shared this with you guys in my last Sephora haul, which was in my last vlog, and I'd been saying that I wanted this to replace my discontinued Smashbox bronzer. And boy oh boy, has it delivered. It's absolutely gorgeous. And uh, I've actually purchased a couple more and I've put them in my professional makeup kit because not only do they give the most subtle bronze to the skin, they're super lightweight, they're not shimmery, they look very natural. This is perfect for bridal. And I like to apply this to my own face using the e.l.f. Uh, flat top powder brush. Sometimes I use like those tulip brushes, but in the mornings at home, I like to use this brush because it's in reach. So I hit up my forehead, my temples, a little bit around my cheekbones, down my neck. I'm looking like Trailer Trash Tammy and if you guys don't know who that is, let me make your life better by listing her in the description box below because she has a YouTube channel and she's fucking hilarious. I'm pretty sure she started on Vine. Babe, it's Valentine's Day, you know what that means. Woo! You better call into work tomorrow. I'm about to suck the soul out of you. Daryl, go get me some lemonade. Go! Did you eat all the cocoa puffs? Did you sleep with my brother? Okay. She's just so funny. Okay, so after I've got my whole face bronzed up, I also like to take a little bit of this and apply it to my nose. I've kind of switched up the way that I highlight and contour my nose and I really, really like it. So to do this, I take my Delium Tools 944 brush, which is kind of like a small tulip brush. I do a couple dabs in the Candle Glow Sheer Perfecting Powder and I bronze my nose. And then what I like to do is take a lighter powder foundation. Today I'm going to be using the MAC Studio Fix Powder Foundation in C2 because it's very yellow undertone. And with a Real Techniques pointed foundation brush, I'm just gonna run it along the sides of my nose to sort of slim it a little bit. And if I don't use this powder, then I'll use a similar one by NYX. Uh, I forget what it's called off the top of my head, but I'm all out of it, so I'm using my Studio Fix powder instead. I prefer to do it this way because it just takes the stress of having to sort of draw those two lines down the center of your nose and blending them out, especially in the morning when I don't have a lot of time anyway. I don't want to worry about having a crazy nose contour. And I think a little bit of bronzer on the nose looks cute, kind of like a sun-kissed nose that you would get in the summertime, you know? Just me.
Okay, so next I'm going to move on to my brows, but before I do that, I'm just going to take that same MAC powder and I'm going to carve out my cheekbones. Again, I don't usually do this in the mornings, but today I got time. And I'm just going to let this sit while I fill in my brows. To fill in my brows, I alternate between the NYX Micro Brow Pencil and Taupe and the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wiz and Taupe. I don't really have a preference. I feel like they are very similar. I just use whatever's closest to me. Today I'm going to be using the NYX Micro Brow Pencil because uh, I just opened up a fresh one. And I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I've completely changed the shape of my eyebrows. I've cleaned them up a lot over the last year. I now trim them and I've just brought them up a little bit higher before I had like a boxier brow in the front and then it was thinner near the end. I've gotten rid of that boxiness and just lifted that front and I think it's made such a dramatic difference to my face. I have a lot more room to play on my eyelids. Not that I do it often anymore because I never have anywhere to go, but the option's there if I want it. And I feel like it's kind of given me a more youthful look. I don't know, maybe it's in my head. Other than changing the shape of my brows, nothing else has really changed in terms of technique. I just use my micro brow. I go along the bottom of the brows. Sometimes if I have a few hairs that are out of place, I'll tweeze them beforehand, but I tweezed them yesterday, so there's no need for that today. Speaking of eyebrows, um, I've been trying to hijack my sister-in-law's eyebrows for a while now. Every once in a while she'll come over and ask me to do her makeup before a big night out with the girls And the last time she was over I pretty much straddled her and held down her arms and Tweezed her brows and tried to reshape them and fill them in because she's kind of rocking that like old-school brow That's way thicker in the front and thinner near the ends similar to what I was rocking But a level up if you know what I'm saying Bless her, she's got amazing brow hairs and I think it's just the way that her eyebrows grow. But I wanna take over her brows so bad. She told me that um, if she were to let me do it, she needs to just get used to the idea because eyebrows are super personal and uh, that she would let me do it in gradual baby steps. But that is not the answer I was hoping for. So I think what I'm gonna do is get her drunk, have her agree to let me do it and then film it so I can create kind of a cool little time-lapse video of just reshaping somebody's brows. I think it's so much fun. And then you guys can enjoy it with me. So basically, Bianca, if you're watching this. Look at me, sure. Look at me, sure. I'm the captain now. After I fill in my brows, what I like to do is take a little bit of concealer and a flat synthetic brush, and I like to clean up just underneath the brow here. This step has become everything to me because I finally found the perfect concealer and the perfect brush. I used to do this back in the day, but I had never really honed in on the perfect concealer to do this with, and the combo that has not let me down is the CoverGirl Fresh Complexion Concealer. I think this is the lightest shade, I don't know because the little sticker came off the bottom and the MAC 242 brush and I will not do this with any other brush I've tried every single brush you can imagine this is the brush for this really cleans up the area underneath my brow and especially in the morning when I don't know I have my eyes half closed sometimes I get a little heavy-handed with the brow pencil and I make them a little bit too thick I don't make them perfectly crisp I'm aware that I'm not reinventing the wheel here. I'm pretty sure everybody cleans up their brows the same way, but it has just taken me a very long time to find the perfect texture of concealer to do this flawlessly every single time. Like it never lets me down. Next, I'm gonna set my brows using the Milani Brow Shaping Clear Gel. And this isn't the one that I use every single day. Sometimes I'll just use whatever's closest to me. But what I like to do is I run it through my entire brow. I like to make the front of my brow a little bit wispier. So I'll just brush the hairs upwards so that you can actually see the texture of my brows. I feel like that makes them look a little bit more natural and now I'm gonna move on to the most signature part of my look which is uh, the way that I apply my false eyelashes and the style of eyelashes that I wear because every single time I'm on snapchat posting something and I've got these lashes on which is pretty much every single day or when I post a photograph on Instagram I get asked 
what lashes are you wearing? So there is a little bit of a process to how I get this done. So the lashes that I wear every single day are the Salon Perfect 615s. I've never been able to find these in store. I order them on walmart.com in a multi-pack. I just take them out of the packaging super carefully with my tweezers and my fingers. And then what I do, as you can see, they're like segmented. I cut off the last two segments at the end of the eyelash. So I don't touch the inner corner, I get those two, and then I stack the two segments on top of the end of the remaining eyelash. And I like for the shortest part to sort of hang off the end a little bit. So you've got like a longer piece and then a shorter piece at the end. And the reason I do this is because I like the added volume on the end and I don't like to have super wispy segmented lashes at the very front of my natural lash line. So the first thing I do before applying my eyelashes is I curl my lashes and apply just a little bit of mascara to the very front part of my lash line because when I apply the lashes, the false ones are gonna start around here and I don't wanna leave these guys out. They wanna party too, so I apply a generous coat of mascara just to the front of my eyelashes. And if I'm not wearing false lashes, which is very rare, I still curl my eyelashes and I use a waterproof mascara after I curl them so that that curl is locked in place. And the mascara that I like to use for this is the L'Oreal Voluminous False Fiber Lashes in the Waterproof Formula. This has been one of my favorite mascaras since I started YouTube. The wand is really long and skinny, so you can reach those uh, baby lashes in the front without getting the mascara everywhere. After I've applied a little bit of mascara to the front of my lashes, we're ready to apply these bad boys. So I just use a little bit of duo lash adhesive, even though it smells so gnarly. I let it get tacky, and then I apply my lashes. And I like to apply the lashes starting at the end of my lash line, if that makes sense, and then I adhere them working my way into the eye. And the reason I like to use duo lash glue is because it's very easy to pick off the eyelash at the end of the day. I find the House of Lashes glue works best with like super thick bands, but it gets really tacky and really messy and it actually kills the life of my lashes, if that makes sense. Like I can wear these lashes eight to 10 times before I throw them out, which is great because I wear them every single day. Once these are on, sometimes what I like to do is go in with a little bit more mascara and apply it to my front baby lashes, but I think we're okay today. And I also like to leave my bottom lash line completely bare, especially um, during the work week because I'm very tired and I feel like leaving the bottom lash line natural opens up the eyes a little bit more and gives you more of like that baby doll look, if you know what I'm saying. Once the eyelash glue has dried though, what I do like to do is take my Physician's Formula 2-in-1 Eye Booster Pen, and I like to fill in the glue that hasn't dried clear because I hate being able to see glue along my lash line. And if I'm feeling really spicy, like let's say on a Friday, I might give myself a little winged eyeliner, or when I've worn my false lashes like eight times and they're near the end of their life and they're a little bit clumpier, I do a thicker winged eyeliner to sort of mask the fact that my eyelashes are falling apart. Another thing I like to do, let's say my eyelashes are a little bit clumpier in the front, is I add just like a tiny bit of eyeliner right here to blend my natural lash line into the band of my false lashes, if that makes sense. Moving on to blush, I do like to alternate between a couple. Sometimes I use the Balm Pop Mama. It's kind of like a dupe for NARS Orgasm, except 100 times nicer and not chunky. Sometimes I like to use MAC Warm Soul, and sometimes I like to use the Wet n Wild Color Icon Blush in Apricot in the Middle. And I'm feeling peachy tones today, so I think I'm just gonna go with this one. And I'm going to apply it to my cheeks using this angled Sephora brush. It's called the Angled Natural Blush brush. I think they reformulated these blushes and they're just beautiful. So pigmented. And then with whatever's left on my powder brush, I'm just going to blend out any excess as well as dust off that Studio Fix. Moving along to the last few steps of my everyday makeup look, I'm gonna highlight my nose, my cupid's bow, and just underneath the arch of my brow. And to do so, I'm gonna be using the Mary Luminizer by The Balm. 
I never get tired of this highlighter. And to apply highlight to my nose, I'm gonna be using an art store brush. And the way that I like to highlight my nose now is to drag one line down the center. I stop around here. I create kind of like an upside down triangle. So it's thicker on the top and it gets thinner as I get to here. And then I do just a little bit on the tip. A lot of people hate this. I personally love it. I think it looks really cute. And then I take the pointy end of this brush and I apply it just on my cheekbones. I like a super subtle highlight. I'm not a huge highlight person, but if I'm going to, then I always stick to the Mary Luminizer because it looks really natural. It actually looks even more natural in person. I feel like the light that I have going on in the background is really picking up that highlight. It's good for you guys because you can actually see what the fuck I'm doing. Moving on to the lips, I'm going to stick with peachy tones and I'm going to line my lips using MAC lip liner in Subculture. And I actually round out my Cupid's bow sometimes to make my lips look larger. Now I'm going to fill in the rest of my lip with the Sonia Kashuk Velvety Matte Lip Crayon in Pinky Nude. These are fabulous and they're very similar to the matte crayons by NARS that look similar to this, except these are like a fraction of the price. I really like this matte look, but if I am gonna use a gloss for this, the one that I would be using is the NYX Butter Gloss in Creme Brulee. And let's say on a day that I'm not feeling peachy tones, I will use the MAC Mineralized Blush in Gentle. This is one of my absolute favorite blushes, and if you're a woman of color, you need this in your life. I've talked about this a lot on my channel. It looks really, really, really nice. A little bit goes a long way for my fellow fair ladies. And I usually like to pair that with the MAC Casual Color Lip and Cheek Color in Relaxation. This is a cool toned pink. It's gorgeous. And that, my friends, concludes my everyday makeup look. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was nice sitting down and chatting a little bit. Like I said, I don't always pull this off. I'm not always this relaxed in the morning. I don't always have time to make myself look fabulous, so on most days, I just hop on that struggle bus and take it for a ride. As usual, all the products that I use will be listed in the description box below. Let me know if you guys want more videos in this format. Super chill, unplanned. Just kind of sat down, did my makeup. I had fun. I hope you had fun as well. All right, I'm starving. What else is new? Thank you guys very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, love you, bye.